Welcome back to BeHookedCrochet.com. I'm your host, Brittany, and in today's tutorial, we're gonna learn how to crochet the beginner crochet leg warmers. This is a free pattern that's available at BeHookedCrochet.com, and you can find the link to that pattern in the description below. For this tutorial, you will need two skeins of Lion Brand Yarn Landscapes yarn in the colorway of your choice, a size six millimeter crochet hook, a darning needle, and a pair of scissors. Let's go ahead and get started. To begin, we need to start off by creating a slip knot. To make a slip knot, you want to take the tail end of your yarn and you want to wrap it around the index finger of your non-dominant hand two times coming towards you. Now you're going to take this back strand and you want to lay it over the front strand and then you want to grab that front strand and pull it up and over the tip of your finger. Now hold on to the tail and the working yarn here and pull up with your finger to tighten up that slip knot. Now you'll just simply insert your hook into that knot, pull on your working strand of yarn to tighten it up, and we're ready to go. This pattern calls for 35 chains. And you may have to make some modifications to this pattern in order to fit your calf or your leg, or if you're creating this as a gift for somebody, you want to make sure that the number of chains that you create here fits around your leg. Now this pattern will stretch a little bit, so if it's if it's just slightly tight, then you won't have to worry about it. To make a chain, all we need to do is wrap the yarn and pull it through the loop on our hook. Now the loop on our hook never counts as a chain, so what we've done is create our first chain here. And we just want to repeat that motion until we have 35 chains. Once you have crocheted all 35 chains, you want to take a second to make sure that this fits around your leg. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to join it to the beginning in order to create, to start the, the tube basically that we're creating. And so why don't you go ahead and take a second to make sure that this ring will fit around the widest portion of your calf. If you need to make it smaller, then you'll simply use fewer chains. Now you can do this based completely on what fits you. There's really no modification that needs to be made to the pattern. You just want to make sure that you start out with enough chains to fit around your leg. If you need to add a few chains, then you may have to purchase one extra skein of yarn. So when you have 35 chains, you will have exactly enough yarn to crochet Basically, we use one skein per leg warmer. So if you're, if you're using more chains, you'll be using more yarn and you'll need to buy an extra skein. Now that you have the proper number of chains that fits around your calf, we're gonna go ahead and, and turn this into a ring. So one of the most important things is you need to make sure that your chain isn't twisted. We wanna make sure that we've got I like to look at it from the braided side. That I think that's easier to see if it's twisted. So we want to just run our finger down and make sure that we're not twisting it. And then we're simply going to fold it around because as I said, we want to join it with our very first chain. And once we're certain that it's not twisted, then we can just simply insert our hook into this first chain and you can just go under one loop of the chain is fine. And so you've got your loop that was already on your hook and then you've got the chain looped around. 
And so then you just want to take your working yarn, wrap it over your hook, and then you just want to pull that loop that you've wrapped through both of the loops on your hook. And what you've done there is create a slip stitch. So we've slip stitched this closed and we're ready to start on the first round. This entire pattern is worked using the double crochet stitch. And if you're familiar with the double crochet, you probably understand that it is the height that's equivalent to three chains. So to start off this round and every other round, we're going to chain three. And now we're going to locate the very next chain and we're going to work our first double crochet into the chain. Now something I like to do, because I, I like the way the finished edge looks when it's created, so you're probably familiar with the fact that there are three loops or three um, pieces of yarn that you can work into when you're working with chains. Now you've got the two loops or what create the V on the front side and then you've got the hump on the back side and when you work into the hump on the back side you're left with this braided edge and it's also a little bit more stretchy so I feel like that's more appropriate for this pattern since you know usually at the top of our calf it's much wider than our ankle so we want to make sure that this pattern does stretch a little bit so here I've located my very first chain. So I've got my slip stitch into this one and the chaining of three is accounting for that chain. So we want to work into this next one. And I'm going to flip it upside down and I can see that hump right here. And that's where I want to work my first stitch. To make a double crochet we just want to yarn over. I'm going to insert my hook into that back loop of the chain then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. That's how you create the double crochet if you're unfamiliar. And then we just want to put one stitch into the next hump, which I can see is right there. Now if you're finding that working in these back humps is just a little bit more difficult or more time consuming than you're willing to put into it, then you can certainly work into whatever you're used to. If you're used to working just into one loop of the chain, it's not going to really change the pattern at all. It'll just change the way the edge looks. So this pattern is actually quite easy. For this round, round number one, we're just going to put one double crochet into every single chain. And we just want to make sure we're not twisting the chain up as we go along. Because if your chain ends up getting twisted, then it's going to mess things up when we have to join it when we go around. When we, when we meet back around to the other side, if our chain is twisted, then it's going to make our work twisted. So the motions for the rest of this round are basically the same. So go ahead and finish crocheting one double crochet into every single chain. And then we'll talk about how we join to the very beginning of our round so that way we can start round two. Once you have made one double crochet into every single chain, we're ready to complete round one. And something you'll probably want to do just to make sure that you're on the right track, you want to make sure that you have 35 stitches, including the chain three. Okay, we're counting that as a stitch. So we started off with 35 chains, 
we want to make sure we have 35 stitches. Once you're sure that you have the correct number of stitches, we're going to join our work here with the third chain from our chain three. So I can see I've got one chain, two chains, and this one right here is my third chain. And I'm just simply going to insert my hook into the chain. I like to catch two loops of the chain when I join. So basically I've got the top loop and the back hump of the chain under my hook. And then I'm going to slip stitch. So I want to yarn over and I want to pull that loop through the chain. And then I also want to pull it through the loop on my hook. And that's how we join at the end of every round. To start off round two, again we want to chain three. So one, two, and three. And now we want to put one double crochet into every single stitch. Now as I said before, the chaining of three counts as a stitch. So we need to locate the next stitch where we want to work. And you might be inclined to work into this hole right here. And that's actually not where we want to work. That is the result of the slip stitch into the chain. So basically this is the chain here. And we can see if we look right next to it, we've got this stitch right here. That's our first stitch. That's where we want to work. So we just again want to double crochet and for this pattern we're working under both loops of the V. So we want to make sure we catch both of those loops when we're double crocheting. And we're just going to do that for every single stitch. And again at the end of this round you should have 35 double crochets. Continue double crocheting one time into every single stitch until you've reached the end of this round and we'll join with a slip stitch and start round three. Once you've made it to the end of round two, again we just need to join to our chain three. So we're going to pick the third chain, insert our hook into that chain, and slip stitch to seal off the round. Now round three is going to begin the same way. We want to chain three and we just need to put one double crochet into every stitch. Now again we're going to make sure we skip this stitch right here because that's what's associated with this chain. So we want to go ahead and put a double crochet in the next stitch. The pattern repeat for this project is really quite simple. I've demonstrated now two rounds and we're working on the third and the pattern is the same throughout the rest of the project. All we need to do is chain three at the beginning of the round, put one double crochet into every stitch and join with a slip stitch. And we'll want to repeat that until we have a total of 28 rounds. And with this yarn, if you're following along with the same yarn, it's really simple to be able to count your rounds because this is color changing yarn and so pretty much every round was going to be a different color.
Once you've made it around to the end of round three, you want to slip stitch to that third chain from the very beginning of the round to finish off round three. And now as I said, this pattern, this is basically the repeat for the entire pattern. We're just gonna repeat the same round until we have a total of 28. Once you've finished all 28 rounds of the first leg warmer, come back, we'll talk about binding off and weaving in these tail ends and we'll wrap things up. At that point, you can just start off your next leg warmer the exact same way and we'll be all finished. Once you've finished crocheting all 28 rows, we're gonna go ahead and bind off. So I've finished off by slip stitching into my chain three on my 28th row and now I'm just gonna cut the tail and then I'm gonna pull that tail through the loop that was on my hook to bind off. I like to weave in my ends on the wrong side of the work so the portion that we have been crocheting around as you see here this is the right side and the inside of our leg warmer is going to be the wrong side. So all we need to do is thread our darning needle. And then I just want to take the tail, I'm gonna work it back through this stitch and that's gonna kinda seal off that little gap there. And then I just need to work the tail through several of the stitches. And I'm gonna go back and forth as many times as I can, and that's gonna secure the tail in place so it doesn't work its way back out. Once you've got that woven in, you can just cut off the extra. And then we'll go back to the other side of the leg warmer and we'll work in the tail on the other side. So this is where we started. We're just gonna treat this the same way. Now we'll just cut off this tail and our first leg warmer is complete. And now all you need to do is repeat this same leg warmer one more time using your other skein and you'll have your set. This concludes the tutorial for the beginner crochet leg warmer. Stay tuned for the next tutorial from Be Hooked Crochet at BeHookedCrochet.com.